Well, yeah. I'm going to do this whole episode as Spencer. <laughs> All right? So, hey, guys. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Yeah. That's a good Spencer. All right. Look at that. Look at that sign. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> We, we are Scream Dreams. I'm Catherine Corgan. Hi, I'm James A. Janice. We're not going to banter? Okay, this is the part banter. of the banter because I had this idea. Yeah. Because, yeah. because I'd yeah. be like, you should totally do the episode of Spencer, but I might have ruined it now that we've interjected because Sean Clark actually in in – represents all of us in addition to being an amazing podcast host himself. See, I had a plan. Okay. Do you see? Like, I was going. Okay. Let's yeah. just roll with that then. Because yeah. yeah. you're in charge. You're in charge. <laughs> yeah. But also, I want to say, because Sean just did this crazy like, Spencer... Yeah. Yeah, this is the banter, producer Bob off camera. This is, <laughs> this is all in it. This is live. This is live. We're going live. This is all. <laughs> Sean just did an amazing Spencer Charnas impersonation. And when we were on the phone, you, you did a Jeffrey Combs. And who else did you do? I do a lot. I think of a Tobin a Tobin Bell. Oh, yeah, Tobin. I didn't yeah. know that you were so good at impressions and impersonations. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I pick up on there's certain people that have certain cadence and everything, and and I'll pick up on you know talking to them so much, and then you you start kind of doing it as a joke. Yeah, uh, and I guess I do some pretty good. I don't Is know. it because you represent them and we get on your nerves, so you have to start? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I re yeah, I mean I I do. Yeah, I represent them, but they don't get on my nerves. But <laughs> but no, funny thing is Jeff. Combs, as Barbara knows very well, uh, he's a guy. I love him to death, but he's the kind of guy that I could text him like, hey, uh, they want to know if you want steak or fish for dinner. And you could just anybody could just text back and put steak. <laughs> Phone rings. It's going to be so Sean um, <laughs> fish. Yes, uh, I. <clears throat> Let me think about. I mean, it just goes he over. <laughs> he overthinks everything, and I, I just, just I, every time I send him stuff, please just text back, please, because I'm on a call with him for a half hour minimum, just to get a quick answer. You know. Do you know how many people would kill for a half hour phone call with Jeffrey Combs? You know, <laughs> and I don't take that for granted. I don't. Yeah, that's all right. I don't. The the 15 year old kid in me goes, that was Herbert West. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's sometimes. It's not a conversation about dead cats. It's it's a, uh, yeah. Sure. sure. Fish. <laughs> well, yeah. we're about to have a conversation with you. <laughs> I'm Catherine Corcoran. <laughs> I'm James A. This is see? the most chaotic intro to a podcast I've ever seen, but it's great. See it's fantastic because this is Scream Dreams, the nightmares that shaped us, where we talk to your favorite filmmakers and creatives about what actually terrifies them. And today we have Sean Clark, who is, uh, like we've mentioned, uh, represents people for the convention circuit, but you've also been making horrors hallowed grounds for how long have you been doing that series? Well, I mean, it started as an online thing. Yeah. Um, was that during the Bush era that that was going on? <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> it's in early 2000s. That's I mean, what like I thought. Two, maybe yeah. 2000, 2001. The first, you know, when I started doing it as an actual like video episodes, the first episode was on uh, the Halloween 25 Years of Terror documentary as a bonus because I, I was one of the people that did that documentary. So the bonus was you know one of my episodes on Halloween. Yeah, um, and I think was, that that would have been 2003 then if it was the 25 year right. Uh, it actually came out in 2005. Oh, okay, it, it took us a while yeah, it, to to get it out. Um, sure, I, I remember seeing that when I was researching Halloween and and that was part of my research was watching that video and then I remember seeing you at conventions after that and I remember once co going up to you and being like, oh hey, I I love Horrors Hollowed Grounds and now you know that was that was in 2018 I think that was probably oh, at the. Uh, that Halloween 40 convention. That would have been age 40, yeah, mm -hmm. 2018. Yeah, so yeah. I think that was uh, when I when I did that. And you probably don't remember just because it was the random interaction. But now here we are. You, you represent us, uh, yeah. me and <laughs> me and Chelsea, for convention appearances. And we're hanging out. So yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. great. Good times. But... Good time. <laughs> and now you're doing our show. Yeah. You didn't think we'd, we'd bother you any more than How the mighty have fallen, do. right? <laughs> 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 Now people are like, "Who's this guy?" Oh, he represents them. That's why no, he's no, but That's actually, why he's there. no, because <laughs> not even remotely because you're such an expert on the genre and about fear. And I mean, and you're and you're kind of you're such a maverick. Like you have horrors. I'm serious. You have horrors ha hollowed grounds. You also run your own convention, Halloween Forty Five. 
At, well, with every five years, every it changes. five years, yeah. mm-hmm. but you're a musician as well. I mean, like, what drew you to the horror space to begin with? Just seeing horror movies when I was a little kid. I've been a fan since as I could walk. You yeah. know, I, I think somebody asked me the other day what was the first horror film you saw, and I think my my first memory was The Exorcist, and I was four years old. Oh, nice. Wow. And uh, my I was in the backseat of the drive-in, and I, I didn't know what the hell I was watching, but I remembered the imagery, you know, mm-hmm. very vividly. But uh, horror films never really scared me. I mean, I, I kind of was used to them. My parents were really young when they had me. I'm an only child. They were like 17 and 18 when they had me, so they liked to see scary movies, and it, I just thought it was normal, you know. Yeah. There was very few movies that really scared me. Yeah. I mean, just there a couple I can think of that like I was. Which? Yeah. Huh? Like which? Jaws made oh. me terrified of water. So Exorcist? No. Jaws? Yes. Yeah. I didn't understand Exorcist. Sure. I don't think. Jaws, <laughs> you know, wait, the water, bad. Um, but another one that just freaked me out harder than any movie ever, when I was, I was the right age, was Trilogy of Terror, that little voodoo oh. doll. Oh. I, that Blu-ray is sitting on my shelf. I haven't. I've never seen the movie. Yeah. But I bought it to watch it, and I still haven't. Well, you watch it now, you're gonna laugh your ass off. Sure. It's <laughs> la- I, but as a little kid, mm-hmm. I was screaming for them to turn it off. It was a made-for-TV movie, so yeah. it was on TV. And I remember, I remember where I was at. I was at my uncle's house, and my mom and her brothers, and they were watching it, and I'm just like screaming, turn it off. Yeah, you know, it was freaking <laughs> me out. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it's those things are like sort of visceral memories. The things that's how old were you when you? I had to have been seven, maybe. That was me for when yeah. Scream scared me out of the the living room. That opening scene, I was seven years old and just wow. like flee. I feel so old now. <laughs> Mine was Leprechaun. Leprechaun, Leprechaun. two. <laughs> Wait, two. <laughs> two. The Leprechaun. one in L.A. Yeah, Leprechaun. What two. scene? What scene? It's the oh. one where he, or maybe it is Leprechaun. One. No, I think it's two, where he runs his finger like down her like leg. That's or the first like one. That. He's under the truck. Yeah. It's Jennifer Aniston's. Leg. Yeah, Jennifer yeah. Aniston's. Like I always forget if she's in the first or the second. First one. Yeah. Wow. I was like five. And I was at uh, like my friend's house, and her dad had it on, and we were like playing in the corner, and I was like watching. Oh my god, terrified! And this, and her dad. I, I, I'm sorry if this girl is watching this because I don't even remember their last name. But her, her dad was scary. He, she scared mm-hmm. me. Was he a leprechaun? Yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> her yeah. dad's work, David. Yeah, her dad, well, he was actually looking for you know like f- familial references. No, <laughs> he's not a leprechaun. But yeah, these does is that still something that scares you then? Like voodoo no, or now water? Now I have that doll sitting on my desk at home, so you know see it every day. Yeah, yeah. I mean I I like to I. I embrace those things that scared me you know that like the poltergeist clown yeah. i have the real mm. one in my house oh you know? yeah, yeah. So one of four that was made for the movie yeah so. dude i was just talking because uh i was just watching that movie did a commentary track on it uh and we brought up that there were four of those you have one of them yeah yeah there was two happy faces and two angry faces. which one do you have i have one of the happy faces and what how recently did you get that I've had it for over 20 years. Okay, because yeah. one of them sold recently for an Insane absurd amount. Insane amount of money. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you did not pay that much? <laughs> no, okay. I got very lucky. Because that was like a five-figure sale, I'm well, pretty that, sure. That's six the figures. other thing. So it's like 670000 I think. <laughs> what the? Yeah. Oh, just a house. You know. <laughs> just sitting in, you have the worth of a house. But that's the other thing is you're such a, you're a collector. You really are. Getting yeah. you a Christmas <clears throat> gift this year was the most <laughs> stressful thing because I have to tell you, I was like, I can't get this man anything that he doesn't already have. Like, there's nothing yeah, I'm going to do. Just give him, be... like, a trick-or-treat studio, like, <laughs> like Halloween night. Like, there's nothing <laughs> that's going to, like, do it for him. So I tried my best, but I was like, no. <laughs> well, you and everybody else have that same problem. My, <laughs> my girlfriend's just like, you know, what, you know, whatever. You know, just, <laughs> it's like, I don't know what the hell to do, you know, because I'm the kind of guy that if there's something I want, I just get just it. Just get it, you yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not that I'm, like, super just, like, rich guy that's throwing my money around. Yeah. It's just I, if I want something, I just I, I get it. You yeah. Know, just, mm. you know, and I'm very particular, so yeah. that's a thing. You know, it's not like you can just – but every once in a while I get surprised. Somebody will give me something I had no idea existed, and I'm like, oh, my God. You know, it yeah. happens. Yeah, no. I, I I managed to give one of those gifts once every like five years to someone, yeah. like a gift where I'm like, Eureka! This is something that they they wouldn't have thought of, but they're gonna love it, and it, it's like a thoughtful gift, and I'll give it, and then I'm like, that's all you're gonna get from me for like five years. I'm sorry, yeah. my brain doesn't think that way, but once in a while there will be a Eureka moment. Is but. that how you got into representing? I mean, all of you have such a like not. 
not to toot our own horns, but you have <laughs> such a, a, a roster of clients, you know, some of the greatest ever. Yeah, like ever. Catherine Corcoran. No. <laughs> James and, <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, James and Catherine, those guys, no, but really like some of the greatest ever. I think the only convention appearance that Jamie Lee Curtis has ever done mm -hmm. has been with you. Yeah. Is that how you got into representing? Because it's such a niche world. Yeah. You know, was it that you were collecting, you know, memorabilia mm -hmm. or? No, what, what I, I, it was an accident. Accident. It was all of it was an accident, really. It just kind of kept stumbling into things. Uh -huh. um, so how I really started was when we did the Halloween 25th convention, 2003. Um, I I was one of the people responsible for finding guests. So I started cold calling people and just being like, "Hey, you're doing this Halloween convention. You're in Halloween. Want to do it?" Yeah. You know. And so that whole show, I wasn't getting a percentage from anybody. I was a promoter, you know. Um, so I learned how to do it. And then eventually some of those people are like, hey, man, I'd like to do more of these. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh, well, you know, I know some of the other promoters because at the time I think I was writing for I was with Creature Corner was mm -hmm. where I started with Ryan Turek, a.k.a. Ryan Rotten at the time. Was, <laughs> wow. And a guy named Johnny Butane. They they were Creature Corner. And then that they split off. And I think Ryan went and started Shock to You Drop. Mm -hmm. And then we went and started Dread Central. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Um and so I was all, I was working with one of those outlets. So I, I would go to conventions and review them. Oh. So I was starting to get to know a lot of the promoters personally. So I was like, well, I could call this guy up and see, you yeah. know. And so I did it a couple of times and people kept asking me to do it again. And I knew there was another guy I'd seen at conventions that was a convention agent. And I kind of picked his brain one night at the bar, you know, at a hotel bar at one of the conventions. How do you make money doing this? You know, and he starts telling me, well, you know, this and that. And they fly me in, put me up. And I go, whoa, whoa, hold up. They fly you in to the convention and give you a hotel room mm -hmm. and you get to go to the convention for free? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm Sign in. Me up. So I started going just for fun. Like, I'd hell, yeah. if I can book somebody and get to go for free and get it paid for, I was stoked. And at the same time, I was trying to push my own horizontal grounds thing. Yeah. I was also in the process of doing a movie, this movie I wrote and produced called The Black Waters of Echo's Pond. I was trying to promote the shit out oh. of that. So I was thinking this is a free tool to go promote. Yeah. But then the crazy thing started happening. I started making money doing it. <laughs> and I was getting referral after referral. Like, you know, people would ask me, oh, hey, you want to work with my friend, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that really kind of put me over was um and it's odd it's uh stacy nelkin who was the oh, from the halloween lead, 3, halloween mm -hmm. 3 yeah. season of the witch one day she just goes you know i think my best friend would do really good at these things and i go well who, who's that and she goes linda hamilton oh, and i went wow. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she goes i'll put you in touch with her I'm like okay next thing i know i'm going to linda's house in malibu and we had lunch and next thing you know i'm booking her suddenly my phone's ringing off the hook from conventions I've never heard of comic cons, mm -hmm. you know, how can we get Linda Hamilton? I'm like, Oh, so it kicked open the doors yeah. for me. And then once I got her, it kind of made me more legit. Then people started reaching out to me and it just blew up, you know, like the other big one, big game changer was Norman Reedus. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I was working mm -hmm. with Norman before walking dead. It was yeah. for boondock saints. Oh, nice. Oh. Okay. And I, I'll never forget this moment. I've told the story before. Right down the street here, the Burbank Airport Marriott, mm -hmm. we're sitting there at a Fangoria convention. Nobody in front of Norman's table. I'm sitting there at the empty table with him, and he, we're sitting there just kind of like going, "Wow, this is a this is you know not not good." Yeah. And he kind of goes, "Oh, hey, he goes, you know, I got this new show. It's like it's called Walking Dead. It's like based on a comic. You think it might be good for this thing? It's like horror comic." And I go. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Boom. Skyrockets. Yeah. And since I was with him before that, you mm -hmm. know, we've always had this, like, he trusts me. Because uh -huh. he, he, he's a hard person to, you know, to, to get his trust from. Yeah. And we've been together ever since. I and mean, we're going to Tokyo in May. Wow. You know? I mean, yeah, we're we're busy. That's so cool. So, yeah. I, go ahead. Uh, so when did you start booking people? Like, around what year? Well, technically 2003. So okay. it's 20 years. So yeah. in, in that time, uh, you know, it, it's hard for me because I was just like a, a teenager for part of that. But it seems to me as though horror conventions have really blown up within, yeah. like, the past, I don't know, five to ten years. And, uh, like, what's your perspective on that? Ha has that been the case? Has attendance? Has number yeah. of conventions? Has all those gone up throughout the years? Oh, yeah. I mean, I saw a real boom 
kind of like, you know, the probably like 2000, about 2013, 14. Okay. All of a sudden it just exploded. And everybody kept talking about how the bubble's going to burst, the bubble's going to burst. Never burst. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just kept it getting, and COVID made it even stronger. I mean, when, when we came back from COVID, everybody was like, I wonder if anybody's going to go to these. Oh my God, the attendance went through the roof after COVID. Yeah. yeah. And it's it just doesn't stop. Now, mind you, there's a ton of terrible shows. There's a, <laughs> I mean, because everybody thinks they can put on a convention. Mm. Um, but there's a lot of just amazing ones. So, you know, I, Every weekend, there's I've got people every weekend somewhere. I was home this weekend, but I had people at I think five different shows this weekend, Jeez. including like England and you know, all over the place. So it's it's pretty crazy. I'm I'm doing my best to try to stay home as much as possible now. <laughs> yeah. How the, how many weekends at home do you get a year? God, it, not many. Is it less than yeah. half of the year? Are you? Oh home? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gone at least three weekends a month oh my god yeah. that's yeah. gotta get rough it does the travel is what i hate like i don't mind tour. the work i don't mind mm-hmm. the conventions yeah I, they're, they can be fun it's the getting there it's yeah. the cabs and the airports and mm-hmm. the convention centers and i just ugh, i yeah. hate it all yeah hotels you but know. why do you think it continues to grow and grow and grow like what do you think keeps bringing people back and then also attracting new people year after year I mean, no, I mean, it's just, you know, fandom, you know, people yeah. want to meet their heroes and, you know, I keep, I, I've been around long enough that I've seen the kind of the evolution of it where like when I first started eighties was like the big, big thing. Yeah. And now it's gone into nineties and early two thousands, mm-hmm. you know, like the sudden scream phenomenon is yeah. crazy. I mean, those scream people, th- yeah. I've watched their popularity out of nowhere just quadruple like yeah and i'm like we're all even them you know lillard and skeet and all of them are like what's going on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. <don't> know. <laughs> I feel like it wasn't that way yeah. five years ago even or 10 years ago for sure yeah. do you think that's because of the new films or because i think that drives i think it, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah i think the new films obviously give it a boost mm-hmm. um but also i think that those kids your age that mm-hmm. were your age when you saw those movies are now older have money yep. uh-huh. and and they want to meet those people and they yeah. can afford it you know oh i think it's that time oh yeah we get an appearance an appearance yes i hear he's the one to negotiate them yeah did you help uh book Orchestra this appearance of, of, of... <laughs> no, no, i don't want to break <laughs> oh, all right well yeah. i think it worked because here she, she comes oh. <laughs> hey sean hi oh my good God, to see you good to see you <laughs> I've known you for a long time. And I've known you for longer because you didn't know me then. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's true. I feel like that's the case with most people with yeah. you, Barbara. I, I think the the first time I met you, I where was I? I think I was at some the Beverly Garland Hotel for oh some God. sort of signing like more than twenty years ago, twenty five years ago maybe. The old Ray Courts Hollywood show. Yes. Probably. Yeah. And I was there and somebody had called me to go. I don't know who it was. And then you and another guy came up to me and said, oh, we're, we do, you know, signings at different conventions. I was like, what's a convention? (laughs) And then you said, oh, would, you know, there'd probably be people that would want to see you. Would you, would you want to think about doing that? And I was like, okay. (laughs) And then we worked together for, for a few years until you got so big that, (laughs) and then I worked with another guy, Dominic. Uh And then a friend. Who's a friend? Who's a great guy? And then at one point, you both said to me, "Okay, you can't work with Dominic and with Sean, and so you have to pick." And the only, and you're the best. <laughs> no, no diss to Dom, but um, at that time, I said I have to go with Dom because you have more people than he does. And he and, was just getting it. Going, and he was yeah. just getting started. Mm. And I was like, I'm just gonna go with Dom. Because I like you both. I should have put my foot down (laughs) and then, because you made him successful. Yeah. So Uh, I I should have squashed him out. Should have squashed him early. No, he's got a lot of, he was younger than you and he's got a lot of clients. Still is. Yeah, so it's working out. He's caught up somehow. (laughs) But, But speaking of conventions, and I think I mentioned this on another show, but I just have to mention it today because we're taping this show on Gunnar Hansen's birthday. Oh. Yeah, it's Gunnar Hansen's birthday. And <clears throat> and he was the first person that I was sitting next to at a real convention. You must have booked me at that. I think it was Monster Mania hmm. in very long time ago. Like, yeah, it must have been 20 years. And I was sitting next to him and I knew the Texas Chainsaw um, Massacre movie. And I was like, oh my God, I'm sitting next to Gunnar Hansen. I, 
who is this guy? Oh, this is crazy. Oh my God, I was really afraid of him until mm -hmm. I started talking to him and realized <laughs> he was the nicest person ever. I, yeah. That's yeah. how I met Barbara. Well, that's just before yeah. I had worked with you. It was my very first convention ever. It and was? That yeah. Was, oh. Very first horror convention. I had yeah. done the Comic Cons, like San Diego and New York, because, but that's like a press junket. So you do, they're different. Yeah. You do it like with a film and like Stars brings you and you do right. the panels. It's not like you're signing. Um, but that was my very first one right before the pandemic, actually. It was that like fall. Yeah. And, um, uh, you were catty corner to me, and I was texting our friend Nick Tucci, and I was like, oh my God. Nick Tucci, <laughs> who was my bad son, and you're next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my God, Barbara is like, a rat. he was like, you should go say hi. And I was like, oh no, I, I, can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. And you beelined across him, and you're like, oh my God, because you had just watched this movie we did. And oh, honestly, yes, because I, I was friends with Nick, and then what was the name of that movie? The Long Lost? Yeah. The yeah, long lost. Or yeah, something. and I. And you were so good in that. Oh, thank so you. So good. Thank you. Yeah. But it honestly like made it so much easier for me because it was like so stressful and I didn't know what to do. And, and that, it's like this community that gets hmm. built. And speaking of Terrifier, that was was that one of the first conventions Pro that Damien I, had been at, I, and he had the, this line, and I was like. Who's this terrifier guy? What's this movie? I think well, they had guy? been doing it for a little bit. I mm. shied away from them for a while. So mm, did Jenna. Yeah. And even after that one, I didn't, I just, honestly, this is like not to <clears throat> gas him up, but like until I started working with Sean, I didn't really love him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. And, <laughs> was I and it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't because like I, like the fans and like the community wasn't great. It was just like, it was always kind of stressful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Sean does a great job of like, yeah, making it easy and making right. you feel like well, you're... well, this is the thing. Like we've been talking about conventions, and I, I was over here in the corner just listening before I popped over, <laughs> and um, I think I, I wonder if there's people watching this that that are saying what what is a convention? Because we're all talking about it as if yeah, this is a regular it's part of knowledge. our world, yeah. mm -hmm. but it is different from a film festival. A convention is a place where fans can come and buy merch and like cool things from movies and other things that people make trinkets horror stuff and a place to meet your favorite horror stars mm -hmm. versus like a film festival where there'll be horror movie stars there and they do film festivals for all kinds of genres but um they're not going to like sell things it's yeah. also going to yeah. be people showing up and doing interviews and things like that and you can go and watch movies but now at conventions, they do show some movies. Yeah, and they have, and they have panels. For a few years. And yeah, panels. Too. And so, yeah, panels. you don't always, yeah. it's not just uh, ways to spend money, although there are plenty of, of ways to do that. But yes, the, that's there's true. always You're lots right. of panels, yeah, with yeah. Uh, oftentimes people from movies talking about retrospectives or talking about like broader themes in horror. So it's a really cool place to see people discuss. Like, I remember at Texas Frightmare seeing a, a panel with like. That's a big. Horror convention, that's a big probably one. the biggest. Texas, I know Friday. that's my white whale is for us to be there. <laughs> oh, we I, I've been to, there. Yeah, we were Once supposed to, but then uh, yeah. like it was after COVID and we still weren't comfortable, and then they didn't book us. But uh, I remember seeing a panel with the four original Cenobite. Uh, or not maybe the four original, yeah. but four of the Cenobite actors, and just being like, "Oh, cool!" Hearing them talk about this whole process, really yeah. cool. Yeah. I think it's. I think the panels have gotten better. I mean, Sean can probably weigh on this too. Maybe yeah. it's just the shows you've booked us at, but like the panels are good. Like the mm -hmm. the people who who it again it, it varies convention to convention, but on a lot of them, like they're the the questions they ask and the conversations they want to have are really really interesting, and it's in a mm -hmm. way that like you wouldn't get at a film festival necessarily mm -hmm. where you're promoting one a specific thing. film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I and I do feel like when I started doing conventions, it it really wasn't like the big movie stars that would come out to them. It was a lot of us smaller niche kind of independent horror people. And now, I mean, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis and Norman Reedus and, you know, a lot of other people. Who who else do you have that's like, you know. Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, really, really big stars are going to all of these mm -hmm. conventions now. And they've become quite a phenomenon. And once in a while they would show up to promote something. I remember I I met Jack Nicholson at a Fangoria convention in Whoa, 90. Come on. Oh, all of us just like, oh, Whoa. it was 94 Universal. maybe. Oh, okay. when he was promoting so Wolf. Yeah. He was promoting yeah. Wolf. Yeah. And I was the only person that got his autograph. Whoa. It's a true really? story. So we knew what he was only there for a panel. Uh -huh. We okay. knew where the limo was pulling up. Shit. And it was like in a back alley. 
So just before his panel ended, I ran out there and I had I had my shining poster rolled up with my wolf poster because they had given out a wolf poster to promote the film. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and he, I we see him and everybody's like Jack, 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 and he's getting in the limo. He's literally getting in, and I opened up the poster and it was wolf on top. And he looked at it, he stopped, and he got out of the limo, walked over, signed it, got in the limo, and drove to, drove away. Wow. And I was like, damn, it was the wolf poster. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. I did get it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, That's still awesome. a Jack Nicholson autograph. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of which, you know, autographs aside and that kind of a thing, and you were talking about your collection of things that you have at your house. Now, I've never been to your house i'm still waiting for that invitation (laughs) because i know that you have the resonator from from beyond in your living room i've seen a picture of it well you know we we haven't done a collection video on the resonator yet maybe Mm. you could come over when we do it and talk and and see if it still works yeah (laughs) how how many oh yeah i want to see that how many pieces of memorabilia do you have in your house like if you could say 50 75, 100. When you say memorabilia, memorabilia would be like thousands. Things. Oh, thousands. thousands. But if you want to talk about props. Props. Okay, mm. props. You know. Oh, yeah, over, memorabilia is different. Over 100. Over easy, 100 easy, of props. Easy, you know, more. Like what's screen your used props? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, what's yeah, okay. your favorite prop? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What's your favorite? Probably the poltergeist clown. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's be, kind it's of like be. the big, the first big right. piece I got. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it's close second would be James Remar's vest from the Warriors. Oh, okay. oh that's cool. <gasps> Okay, uh, give us a couple of other examples of things you have at your house that I have all four because of we're the planning Lost on Boys jackets. The, of the what? Oh, wait. All four of the vampire Lost Boys jackets. Oh, oh yeah. I, I know a couple of those guys. That's, <laughs> That's so cool. cool. <laughs> I might even rip one of them. You probably do. Um, yeah. And uh, I have, I think, I think I'm pretty safe to say now I have the world's biggest production made screen used Michael Myers mask collection. Oh, Damn. I, I'm sure. I think I do now. I think I finally take. <sighs> now I gotta let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe thirteen. Oh, what? I think. Do Damn. you rep That's all insane. of the Michael Myers at principal actors? I know there's more. There's so many of them because there's the children yeah. and like the different stunts. But like of the principals for each the film, bad guys. I think. I think I represent everyone there is except for uh, that have ever played the part yeah. except for two. Mm. Okay. okay. One by choice mm. and one just because he does his own thing. Yeah. Um, mm. And that's Tyler Maine. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. He he he, rep, he yeah. reps himself for conventions and he, stuff. But Big uh, man. But I mean, he's always kind of like, he said to me, if you ever have anything for me, just call me. Yeah. But I don't officially represent him. Yeah. Right. And then you also have Dr. Hill's head. Or one I do. Of them. Oh, yeah. nice. There's a couple of them. But you there's have two. two. There's that two. Would be my there's two. One. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I have a wax version of him. It's a big old wax candle mold. You do? Of yeah. Aww. I love Reanimator. That's yeah. sweet. Reanimator's top five for me. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. Have you told me that before? Reanimator. I don't think so. No, but it's I love Reanimator. One Aww, of the only movies <laughs> I went to see twice in the theater when I was a kid. Like I went back to see it again. Yeah. I re- in the same theater. I remember the Brookhurst Lodge Theater in Anaheim I went there with my friends and then went back with a, an 80s metal band that I used hmm. to work for at, we were at rehearsal one night and I said to them you guys got to see this movie it's insane how old were you and I was 15 okay and that's I, not and bad I, and yeah. I took and I they went with me and we watched the movie and yeah, yeah. the band was called Titan they have an album it's called mm-hmm. Mind Over Metal look it up it was <laughs> on uh, it was on Medusa Records I don't know but it was, it's out there um, right. but uh, yeah they loved it so it was a good recommendation. And now you rep Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> yeah, and Bruce Abbott. And Bruce Abbott. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is so good. Yeah, post- I'm excited to see Bruce. I posted this recently that it was before I even knew you. Yeah. Uh, I got gifted a few uh, a horror, you know, T-shirts from this clothing line. And I got to choose once. And I chose a reanimator T-shirt, naturally. Oh. And, um, and then I started filming Terrifier. And on the night that we shot the hacksaw scene um i i wore that to the set and damien was giving like the whole he was like you're gonna we're gonna make horror movie history blah 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 and i was like you're an idiot nobody's <laughs> that's not what's happening here well it shows what i know but um, <laughs> and so i showed up like ready to do this 
with Barbara Crampton on my chest. <laughs> That's amazing. And like I yeah. totally forgot about it. I had posted mm-hmm. it was like years ago. I totally forgot about it. It came up in my memories like recently. I was like, oh my I god. I think I saw you post that. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, like that is. you awesome. know, had to like channel one horror icon to do something else. They didn't <laughs> think it was gonna be that, but and now you know. and now you are a horror icon I yourself. I don't know if I'd say that, but we talk about this a lot. The the ladies who like in our in our group and I always just feel like the biggest fangirl but i appreciate the no, you are one you of us i did get yeah. to meet uh david gale once oh yeah oh. he was at a fangoria convention promoting bride uh-huh. and I, I i got to meet him i uh, didn't get a photo with him got a picture of him signing my i got a couple things signed by him nice. but yeah. uh such a nice guy yeah. yeah may he rest in peace okay now i got his head, <laughs> got his head. <laughs> so you know he lives um on. so we're gonna play a game and this game is, uh, what did I call it when I was sitting over there? Did I say? I named it and I forgot what I named it. I think it's, oh, Monster of My Nightmares or something like mm. that. Okay, Monster of My Nightmares. Yeah. Okay. So. Whatever. If that's not the name, we'll, we'll, we'll change it later. So Sean <clears throat> has all these props at his house. Uh-oh. And. Uh, no, 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 it's not the props. No, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so the props all relate to a movie. Mm-hmm. So Catherine has put in this bowl the names of all the movies. Oh, no, 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 close. it's not the podcast. I was like, nah, no, but close. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's his podcast. It's Bob, our producer, podcast. shaking his head, laughing. Okay. That's okay, this is part of the show. So I know, that's the best part. Yeah. They get to yeah. weigh in on it. Okay. So, okay, so these, these are representatives of movies, and you've talked about them on your podcast about, you know, locations. The okay. locations. Yeah, and the Horrors Hollow the Grounds. Ho- They're yeah. once he's covered. Okay. Yes. Yeah. They're all. So here's just a few of them okay. that we've put into the bowl. So we are all going to pick one of them, and then you have to come up with a scenario of a movie that could incorporate uh, different characters from all the different movies into and combine them into one movie. It's like, like the ultimate crossover. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? If, no, if, if no. one studio <laughs> bought all three of these movies yeah. and wanted to make a crossover oh, sequel to okay. all of them, what would this you can you come up with the premise? And, and then we'll help okay. you. Like you come up with like the first couple of sentences of it, and then mm-hmm. we'll continue on. Yeah, we'll, we'll so. make it good. <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to find the motivation to have a balanced diet when you're cooking everything from scratch and spending hours chopping vegetables. But Factor has a solution. Factor sends chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals right to your door. All you have to do is heat them up. Yeah, they have dozens of meal options to choose from and more than 60 add-on items to shake things up. Whether you're a vegan, a vegetarian, counting calories, or keto, Factor has the meals that you'll love without the piles of dirty dishes. Do you use Factor, James? Yeah, because I hate dirty dishes and I hate spending time cooking. I don't have that time. I, I don't know. have that time. I know it's a bummer because I love to cook, but I like I feel like just in the day and with all the stuff that we do, I just don't have time, and then I sacrifice health mm-hmm. over you know eating something quick. But with Factor, I don't have to do that because it comes straight to your door. You can have you, convenience and good food. Yeah, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. So when we're traveling, we're doing conventions, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. We can just r- pick them back up. Factor works with you and for you. That's right. Head to factormeals.com slash screamdreams50 and use code screamdreams50 to get 50% off. Yeah, that's code screamdreams50 at factormeals.com slash screamdreams50 to get 50% off. (laughs) You know what's a nightmare? Dehydration. (sighs) Yeah, you know what's an even worse nightmare? plastic pollution. That's why we love Liquid Death and their evil mission to murder your thirst and kill plastic pollution. That's right. Their aluminum cans are as metal as they get. (laughs) So pick some up today because we all need something uh, refreshing to reach for when we wake up from a nightmare. It's true. Cheers. (laughs) So I'll pick the first one. Okay. And I'll... Gunnar Hansen. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, nice. And I'm also in the new game. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yes. that's so awesome. So, okay. So, oh, okay. Oh. Well, ladies first. Yeah. Okay. I was just helping pass it. <laughs> Reanimator. Oh, oh my God. Nice. That's amazing. All right. That's so always cool. meant to be, Barbara. It what totally, can I tell you? Yeah. Uh, 
And the fly. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Oh, the fly. Oh, yes. The fly. <laughs> Is that the Jeff Goldblum? The fly? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Great. So, okay. so okay. So, so Universal Pictures yeah. has bought the rights to all three of all these three of these films, <laughs> yes. and they want to do a crossover. Yes. Crossover yes. sequel. Yeah. Okay. What, what do you pitch them? What do I pitch them? Okay. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's. Uh, hmm. I, I, I probably should need some time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, there there would have it have to be something to do with. The, the two doctors, of course, you've got uh, mm-hmm. Seth Brundle mm-hmm. and Dr. Herbert West. Mm-hmm. Good uh, start. Good start. Yes. Maybe maybe they're in a school together and, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, teaching. The, teaching sex ed. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, maybe that leads into their uh, their love of necrophilia and mm. uh, and they need to find a family that can supply corpses oh. and there's the uh, the this family in Texas that, that might have a few lying around that they can you know but then yeah. the sex isn't good enough it's not enough for the Jeff sex? excuse me not Jeff Herbert the corpse sex just isn't <laughs> satisfying so he needs he needs a little life so he starts to reanimate these corpses oh. to get a little, a little more kick, a little more mm-hmm. action, a little more bang for his buck because yeah. you know, lying there still and cold—that's no fun. It's not good. No, he wants to. He wants that ramp up that experience. Sure. So, uh, yeah, there you go. I don't, <laughs> I don't think you need much help from us. That was really good. Well, what about That's the, my you, pitch and uh, Universal call me. Well, well, I think that uh, the issue is that the reanimated corpses—they um, don't really have a lot of senses to them, a lot of sensibilities, so they they tend to meander. So they may uh, accidentally walk into the the machine mm-hmm. that Seth Brundle has yeah. set up, and uh, uh, Leatherface, who is it tends to be you know more simple, uh, may also like try to corral them and and chase after them into the machine, and then the machine goes off, and now you have a Leatherface reanimated zombie hybrid creature who uh, now <laughs> that Wiley Herbert West has to take care of. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, it, and time yeah. between his sexual uh, De- deviations. Yeah. 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 <laughs> VS time. Uh, uh, just a note, uh, Dr. Herbert West would be the last person I would want to learn sex from. Sex ed. It's he. he seems, <laughs> I don't think he had sex. No. He no. seems like a very <laughs> cold. Um, or he would have wanted person. to have sex with Dan. Uh, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. He's very well, into his work. He's very into his work. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you know? <laughs> but but there was a little bit of a bromance going on there. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Especially in Bride. Yeah, uh, we talk about right? it a lot on our channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe the, the you know, may, yeah. maybe maybe he's just closeted. You know, maybe wow. like oh, probably. <laughs> Jeff is not gonna like this episode. <laughs> 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 he's like, first you have me having sex with corpses. Now, yeah. now, now yeah. I'm closeted. Well, yeah. he may be. You know, and as he's struggling through that, he has to try different forms of like body possession to just release it. What's you know keeping him in the closet. And one of those happens to be fly possession, because you know they're fly like, possession. Fly yeah. position. Possession. Oh, possession. I thought you, I thought I thought you said different. Because you know positions. flies are like always kind of like <laughs> sexual positions. <laughs> yeah. The look, and I was like, which know? one's the fly? Yeah. You no, puke well, on them. I guess. Land on them? Well, flies are kind of like. This is gross. Free spirited sex. You could have looked at me and stand in the day. Free spirited, like sexual things. They're always having sex. Don't you see them flying, having sex? I see that all the time. I did see Meet the Feebles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying I've to seen that a few the times. third movie, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. judge my fly choices. I'm not judging your, your Listen, choices. There are no fly. rules. There are, my choices are. <laughs> mm, we're dating well ourselves. So, this compilation <laughs> character is coming out of the. the Seth Brundle contraption. Machine, yeah. Yeah. Machine. What do we call that? I, I forget know. what it's called. I forget what it's called. Uh, do they have a name for it? No. Uh, yeah, maybe. So he, so he comes out, and then where does he go? He goes back to your house. <laughs> back to Sean's <laughs> house. <laughs> and kind of wanting to see if there's any other props that he could make another movie with. He walks in. He goes, why is this head here? Oh. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And just yeah. adds it. To himself. Sticks it on to himself. To himself. Yeah. So then now he's a, a two-headed. David Cronenberg. Then you know, <laughs> should probably have some of those props, too. I actually have uh, Goldblum's teeth from the fly. Well, there, there you go. go. Yeah. I'll pop those in yeah. to the Herbert West. No, Dr. Hill's head. Yep. There mm-hmm. you go. Problem okay. solved. 
Okay, I think that's good. I <laughs> our work here is done. It's, I it's think adequate. Universal. I think we could do think... better, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm liking it. Listen, no, I'm like... I think Universal will be on board. I don't know. I don't know what you guys don't do. undersell yourself, um, Sean. This is an erotic. Well, since I don't think they own any of those properties, they probably won't be. <laughs> but uh, but anyway. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> this is an erotic, you know, boundary pushing educational film. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like it. Those yeah. are top sellers. But what is it? Ca- <laughs> but what I mean, is it called? Oh, yes. oh, but what is it called? Re. Hmm. Texas Refly. Uh, 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 uh. To Hi. fly for a chainsaw guy. Refly. Oh, hey. Refly sure. for a chainsaw guy. Love yeah. that. Refly for the chainsaw guy. Love uh-huh, that. Uh-huh. That's yeah. it. Okay. Cut to music. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, What's you guys. It's a terrible <laughs> film. I mean, it's, no. be it's pretty bad. Yeah. You guys. Can- <laughs> Continue talking. I gotta go. Okay. okay. See you later. Busy, you know. oh. It's always so jarring. I love in and her. out. In and out. It's crazy. Yeah. She's quick. She's quick. She doesn't mm-hmm. drink coffee. Doesn't need the caffeine. Uh, you never know. <laughs> Great. There you go. You, I'm sure you've you've been around long enough to see these like patterns in what's popular. What what do you think? If you could predict, is going to be like the next big thing in horror that that will take either the convention scene by storm or just, you know, the fandom by storm. You just never know. I mean, you know, there's the obvious ones, like obviously Terrifier is hot. So mm-hmm. you would think whoever the next it people are in Terrifier 3 mm-hmm. will, you know, and, you know, obviously I have friends on that film that are going, hey, you're going to want to talk to this person. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. And oddly enough, one of the leads from Terrifier 3 reached out to me like two days ago mm-hmm. independently and I was like, how did, you know, I figured that Jenna or Elliot said yeah. something. They said, no, we just actually looked you up online, saw that you worked with Lauren, saw you worked with, uh, I don't want to say who it is, but I worked with several people that this person was in another project with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, you're perfect. And yeah. I'm like, awesome, let's do this. Yeah. Great. You know, and apparently it's a really big role. So yeah. I'm like, cool. You know, it, it, I'm it doesn't always win though you're not yeah. it's not always a sure thing i mean i've i've had those calls where i'm like super psyched like this person's the lead of this thing and yeah. then that thing just goes Poof. Mm. yeah and then you're like shoot sorry you yeah. know i mean and that happens you yeah. know i mean um i don't want to nah, i'm not going to say i don't want to no. say i don't want to yeah. speak bad of anybody's no. project but there was one there was a couple recently that i just thought were going to knock it out of the park and they and just, it was just not received well. And I'll tell a, you afterwards. <laughs> sure. That's such a disappointment, though, like yeah. when you're like, okay, this this is going to be a big one. And Especially then... since you, if you become friends with these people yeah. and you really mm-hmm. like them and you're stoked for them, like, yeah. I can't wait for you to experience this. And then it's like, it doesn't yeah. happen. But you're I like, think that Damn. also goes with like, what's interesting about convention agents versus your traditional agent is like you guys develop a relationship with us and we're kind of in it for like the long haul a little Mm -hmm. bit you see us through our like ups and downs the popularity and the and dwindling popularity and it rise again of like the different projects and like you're kind of just like on our team in a Mm -hmm. way that sometimes your reps can't be just because it's not as personal you're not spending as much intimate time with them you're not traveling together you're not Mm -hmm. seeing new places together and that's kind of the coolest thing is like you get to foster the community that you also loved being a part of if you're repped by say someone from caa for Mm -hmm. example or innovative or one of those big companies if your star falls just a little bit that company might drop you Mm -hmm. which means that that person who is your convention agent that worked for that company they don't have a choice they're like sorry you know Mm -hmm. and then next thing you know you're you know we're always going to be there i don't answer to anybody it's me Mm -hmm. you know i make the decisions so i decide who i want to work with you know, so I'm I'm there rooting for you, even in your dark time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here and rooting for us and coming on our show. Yeah. Seriously, this is like. Hey, so I figured cool. this might elevate you guys, and you'll do better at conventions. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Awesome. Yeah. I'm always thinking ahead. <laughs> How can I make this better for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of you, where where can the people of the internet find your channel, and what should they look for in your upcoming episodes? Oh, boy. Um, well, on YouTube, uh, it's at Malfunction, but I've recently changed the name to just Sean Clark as my because the Malfunction thing is just too confusing. You have to like, but, tell him how to spell it. Yeah. <laughs> but so if you search Sean Clark, you should be able to find me. But it's, it's at Malfunction. S-E-A-N. S-E-A-N. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, Horrors Hollowed Grounds. I've got a bunch of episodes in the can. Um, I think I don't know what the next one's going to be, but I'm I'm 
real close to finishing Slaughter High. Oh, no. Ooh. Which is a deep cut. Yeah. Which they go to England for that. That was shot in England. Oh, yeah. You were oh. telling yeah. me when you were shooting stuff there. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, Near Dark is another one that's Great. coming. Uh, I know there's another one real close. Oh, God. What is it? I'm forgetting it. Uh, oh, oh, uh, Jeepers Creepers. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, which I did a long time ago um, and finally getting around to getting it done. Uh and uh, you know, thing with two heads. I I know we're shooting an episode next week with and our we're it's hard for Chris and I because we have crazy schedules. It's mm-hmm. really hard for us to schedule stuff. Mm-hmm. We tentatively have an episode scheduled next week, and Jamie Kennedy is going to come on as oh, a nice. guest. Okay. Um. So hopefully that works out. But he's so busy. Like I tried to have lunch with him today. He's on set somewhere. Mm. He's like, oh, I'm on set. Can't do it. Oh. Okay. But. Uh, yeah, that's it. More collection videos coming out. Been doing a lot of those lately. I have a good friend, this guy, Brian Belchek, who he does all my graphic art. Like, he does all the thumbnails for all my videos yeah. and stuff, and he helps out. And he's been pushing me to do more collection videos. So he's been coming over to my house and filming them, mm. and he's been cutting them. So it's been helping me crank out a little more content. That helps, yeah. 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 yeah for sure. And people are like, oh, the, your quality has gotten a lot better. Like, it looks <laughs> like, and it's like, don't get used to it. That's his camera. <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, so got a lot of good stuff coming up. And then conventions like crazy. I got Planet Comic Con in Kansas City this weekend. And then, um, God, what's coming up? I know Horror Hound's coming up soon. And then uh, Spookala, which mm-hmm. you're, you're going to be at both of those, Horror Hound, Horror Cincinnati. Hound, Spookala, and uh, Astronomicon. Astronomicon, yeah. Oh, that He's, one looks like so much fun. That's the same guys who did uh, Silver Spencer's, Scream. Yeah. yeah. That looks like so much fun. I'm just happy to do one in Michigan. Oh, yeah. You yeah. your own mm-hmm. talent. Yeah. That's so fun. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, Sean. I don't know if it was Barbara or Spencer who called you the CAA of appearance booking. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think I might have said that. <laughs> 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 but but, uh, but it has been a pleasure having you on our team and just having you on our show in general. If you liked this interview with Sean, please like, subscribe on both his channel and our channels. Yeah. Um, seriously, show some love. If you didn't like it, keep that to yourself. We don't care. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. You can give us If you're feedback. insecure, leave a bad comment. <laughs> leave a bad comment. Um, we're on Instagram, uh, at Scream Dreams Pod, on all the socials. Our episodes... Oh, wait, what can, what else can we do that I don't know? You can ring the bell. I wish I... One of these days, I'm going to go home and now figure out what that means. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start ringing bells. Um, uh, yeah, our episodes drop every Wednesday. You get unedited ad-free cuts on Patreon on Monday. So check that out as well. And until next time, I'm Catherine Corcoran. I'm James A. Janice. Be sure to leave the light on. (laughs) 